if I was to explain it uh, in, a, in a simplistic way, that the way that I view it in my head, um, I think we take complex carrier content, we put it into our platform where we normalize it, and then we give our customers access to that normalized content via API, we have an agent tool, and we also have white label solutions as well. I think there's there's been a few as we've come out of the, the pandemic. Um, I think one that I've certainly noticed is more interest in North America. Um, I think when you would mention rail before, it would always be kind of assumed that you're talking about European rail, because that's what everyone is, is historically focused on. But I've noticed that there's been a real growth in demand for, for rail in North America. Um, and that's something that that Silk Rail as a business is, is focused on for a number of years. We were the first adopters of Amtrak and, and VRL's API. So we're really well positioned for that compared to the, the rest of the market. But it is really a, a growth market. Um, I looked at the figures the other day. I think we're at about 38% year on year growth, which is actually one of our, our strongest um, growth markets um, globally. And I think for, for me, the reason it's interesting is even now, when you speak to some people in the market, there's this perception that in, in America and in Canada, rail isn't really a thing. You know, no one travels by rail in America and Canada. And the figures say something very differently. And also the, the amount of inbound leads that we get in terms of interest in, in North American rail, um, you know, suggests that that's, that's definitely not the case. I think there's a number of different reasons. You know, I don't think there's 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 one reason. One thing that I think is definitely relevant, though, is corporate travel policy. Um, in the business travel space, you know, you're seeing companies like Google, like Amazon, like Salesforce, all go out to their employees and say, "Look, we need to travel more sustainably," and that typically means getting people out of planes and out of cars and onto trains where it makes sense to to do so. So I think that's made a, a real difference. And, and I think when companies like Google and, and, and Amazon and Salesforce do things, you know, they do it globally, you know, and I think we always assume, like I said earlier, that, that rail is a European thing. It's not, you know, the companies like Google and Amazon, if they have a travel policy to get people out of planes and onto trains, that will be a global policy. And, that, and I think that's why we're starting to see agencies come to us and say, actually, we need to support American and Canadian rail because their customers um, want to support rail in, in, in those countries. I think probably two things. I think the first thing I would say is it's not as complicated as, as people probably think. Um, I think sometimes when you when you when you talk about rail, people do automatically think, ah, this is going to get complicated. I would say that in North America, the carriers, Amtrak and Vera, have done a really good job of delivering products that are actually really simplistic for, for companies to, to retail. So the first thing is don't be afraid of it. It's not as difficult as you think. I think that the second thing I would say is that there's there's new APIs. But again, nothing for, for customers to worry about because we've taken um, that heavy lift, I would guess, I would say. So what's happened is Amtrak, which is the American carrier, has migrated to a brand new API. We've done that work. Uh, VRL, which is the Canadian uh, carrier, has migrated to a new API. We've done that work as well. Now, what that means for customers is anyone who takes our products can be assured that their customers are going to be getting the same fares and service as they would if they went to the carrier's website direct. America is really important though. That fact that we shifted from the legacy API to the new one is really important because Amtrak have actually taken the opportunity to bring in a new set of fares and they've only done that via the new API. And to explain in a really simplistic way of, of how that works is you, you've now got three fare types. You've got your flex fares, as the name suggests, fully flexible, um, the most flexible you're going to get, but obviously the most expensive. You've got your saver fares, which are slightly cheaper, but not as flexible. And then you've got these sell fares, which you won't see as many of because they are more of a fire sale type product. But importantly, you've got these new three fares. 
So customers will see them on Amtrak's consumer website and their expectation will be that they're going to get them via uh, our client's website. Because we've done that API shift, we can assure them that that's going to be the case. I think just reach out, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, um, drop me a message or go to the website, um, drop us a note and then and we can have a chat.